This is how to prepare a file from Tinkercad to be printed by the Dremel 3D40. So um, first thing you want to do is if you have access to the original Tinkercad file, it's great to be able to look at it in that format. Um, so I usually have students sign in with social providers so they can log in with Google. A student can also share their Tinkercad design with you. Um, but it usually works better if you have their original file. Okay, so let's say I wanted to look at this file that a student shared with me. I would click on Tinker This so I can manipulate it if need be. Uh, so a couple things you want to look for. Um, if you rotate it all the way around, you want to look and see if there are any pieces that are, um, for example, uh, floating up in the air like that or sticking through the um, work plane. Those things will both make your print not work well. Um, you also want to make sure that there aren't any pieces that are um, detached uh, or that look like they're attached from one point of view but then aren't in another. Um, I always like to make sure that all the objects are grouped together like these are. If they're one solid color it's a little easier to see if there are gaps. Um, so this print looks like it's going to be all right. It does have an overhang, so I'll have to consider that um, when I'm getting it ready to print. So if the file is ready, you can go to Export in the upper right corner. Make sure it says everything in the design. And then choose .stl for our printer. And it just downloads it here to the downloads bar. So for our printer, we have it set up wirelessly, but you can use the same software even if you're going to use a um, flash drive. So ours is called um, Dremel Print Cloud. And for some reason, there's not a simple way to get there. I have it bookmarked. But if you go to this page where it says Dremel DigiLab and go down here to the orange part, um, you can click Go to Dremel Print Cloud. Like I said, I have that bookmarked. Um, and it automatically logged me in, but you might have to log in with Google. So um, from here, you're going to start under My Files and upload the STL file that the student sent you. So clicking um, Upload New, uh, because it's just in my bookmarks bar, I can drag it up here into the box and it will upload. Otherwise, you click Choose File and navigate to wherever your file is downloaded. Save and go to My Files. So uh, we need to first um, do these three steps, repair, layout, and slice to get it ready for our printer. So once you click repair and double check that you have the correct um, printer selected, uh, you can click fix. And then it will create a new file, which it puts into the My Projects category. So you can see that this file now has um, two types of files underneath it, our original one, and now this one that has been renamed with the word repaired at the end. So this is the one we're going to work with now. So step two is layout. So this is where you can make sure that your design is where you want it on the build plate. If you need to change the scale, if you need to make it smaller, you can do that, or if you want to make it bigger, you can do that. Um, and it will always warn you if it has gone outside of the print box. You can see now it's through the build plate. And luckily, there's a button that just puts it right um, flat on the bed. You can also um, rotate the design if you want to. Um, and you have a few other options, but not nearly as many options as you would have in Tinkercad. So once your design is done uh, and ready to go, you'll click Save and Slice. So the slicing um, is where it will actually cut the design into little layers so the printer knows what to do. You can adjust the layer height, the number of perimeters, and how um, hollow or dense it is. Um, I usually just leave these um, where they are unless I, for some reason, know I want it to go faster or um, be more strong. The raft will put um, kind of a little flat bed underneath your design, which does make it easier to peel off of the bed, um, but it's also kind of usually hard to remove from the design itself. And then supports are usually a good idea, um, especially if you have an overhang, like this creature has this weird nose sticking out. Uh, because that overhang so much, supports will be necessary. So I usually um, usually just use the simple settings, but um, occasionally you might want to play around with the advanced settings. Um, 
and kind of look at some of these other options. But for the most part, I usually just go with the regular stuff and I click slice. So this again, will um, cut it up into the little pieces that the printer needs to be able to read. Um, and then this is the one that you know is ready to print um, for two reasons. One, it changed the file extension to G3DREM, so that's specific to our 3D printer. Um, and it does say the name of the printer next to it as well. So um, if you have it set up for wireless printing like I do, you can just click build and you can either add it to your queue or um, if my printer was turned on right now, I could be able to just print it right now. Uh, otherwise, if you are gonna use a flash drive or an SD card, you can just click on the name of the file and it will download that and you can put that onto your SD card. Um, so then I can always keep track of what is printing. If I click on my printers button at the top here, this will show me my recent files, um, finished jobs. If you have a printer with a camera, you can watch your print um, from the computer which I don't have, but it seems pretty cool. So those are the steps for getting your um, file from Tinkercad into the Dremel 3D Idea Builder printer.